Hello everybody, welcome to another C++ tutorial. Uh, okay, so I fixed up my website a little bit, enough to have some visitors anyway, and I'll be putting these slides and the slides from the earlier C++ tutorials over there. Uh, I'll put a link to that in my uh, video description. And there's also a Facebook page, so uh, you can go over there and like me if you want. Or you can just like me in your hearts. I don't mind. Anyway, today we're looking at a few more operators. These are really basic little operators, and I thought that I might be better off to make a shorter tutorials, sort of on small topics, sooner than trying to cover too much ground in one tutorial. Uh, it just makes it easier to find information on uh, YouTube, and it's easier for me to make these shoots as well. Good stuff. Anyway, incrementing and decrementing. Uh, to increment is to add one to a variable and to decrement is to subtract one from a variable. And in C++ we use uh, these little operators, the plus plus and the minus minus. That's actually two minuses there. It looks like one, but I kid you not, that's two. Uh, so the C++ language name is just a little joke to mean that uh, it's the sequel to the language C. Very funny. All right, uh, suffix versus prefix incrementing. Okay, so there's two ways to write these. Um, you can put them before or after the variable's name. So right here I've got var plus plus, and that's using suffix incrementing. Or you can put the plus plus before the variable name, uh, plus plus var, for example, and that's using prefix incrementing. And the difference is this. Uh, I've just drawn up a little example down here. Uh, with var plus plus, Oh, sorry, if we say int var equals zero, and then int j equals var plus plus, uh, the assignment is going to happen first. So this assignment, uh, j equals var, is going to be performed first, and then var is going to be incremented. It's going to have one added to it. So in this first example here, using the suffix increment, uh, j is going to have zero, since it's going to get the value of var when var is zero, and then var is going to have... Uh, the increment applied to it, so it's going to become 1. Our answer is going to be 0 in j and 1 in uh, var. Uh, otherwise, if we want to use the prefix increment, then uh, the plus plus actually happens before the assignment. So right here, once again, we've got var set to 0 and uh, j equals plus plus var. Uh, that plus plus, or the increment on var, is going to happen before var is set to j. So um, var is going to be uh, incremented to 1, then j is going to get the value of var, they're both going to have 1 in the end. So that's the difference between suffix and prefix, incrementing or decrementing. It's pretty basic really, uh, it's just that uh, if you put the plus plus after a variable's name, then it happens after the other operations. Uh, if you put it before the variable's name, then it happens before any other operations. Okay, so it's just another uh, order of operators thing. Same as uh, division and multiplication happen before uh, addition and subtraction. Okay, more examples here. This time we're talking about decrementing. So decrementing is just subtracting one from a variable, either an integer or a float, you know, it doesn't matter. But uh, we've also got var minus minus and minus minus var. So we've got suffix and decre uh, sorry, <laughs> prefix decrement as well. And both of these will subtract one, and it's exactly the same as before. Uh, the suffix decrement happens after uh, the other operators. So right here, j is going to get the value of var when var is still 0. Then var is going to be decremented 1. So at the end of this, this is uh, using the suffix decrement. Uh, j is going to be 0 and var is going to be negative 1. That's easy. Uh, or we could use the prefix decrement. We put the uh, minus minus at the prefix of the variable's name. So minus minus var. And this time they'll both have negative 1. So the variable will be decremented. And uh, 0 minus 1 gives you that, negative 1. And then j is going to get the value of that. Yeah, most of the time it doesn't really matter. Uh, this is just my preference. I think almost all programmers do the same thing, but if it doesn't matter, uh, you usually use the suffix version, var++. Plus plus. But, uh, I mean, it's completely up to you. Yeah. Alrighty, yeah, another little shorthand here, another little shortcut. 
uh, you'll start to note that programmers, especially, you know, uh, object-oriented programming, it's all about shortcuts. Uh, programmers, they, they don't like to type. So, uh, realistically, programming languages were invented to, uh, you know, take massive shortcuts so that we don't have to program in machine code all the time. Okay, that's good. Uh, this is what we want to do. Int A, B, and C. Three integers, and we want to set them all to exactly the same value. Zero, just here. Uh, we can do it like this. A equals zero, B equals zero, C equals zero, but there's a trickier, there's a quicker way to do it. And it's right here. Um, so, int A equals B equals C. You're still going to declare your integers. Uh, but then, the shorthand way of setting them all to the same value is A equals B equals C equals zero. So you just keep putting these, uh, you know, var equals var equals var, just lots of variables all in a line with equals in between them. And then whatever value you want to set them all to, right at the very, very end. And I think, I'm not sure, but I think that it reads it backwards. I mean, I didn't write the compiler, but <laughs> that's, that's the way that it seems to do it. So it's going to say um, c equals 0, then b equals c, and then a equals b. Hey, presto. They're all going to be set to zero. Yeah, that's cool. Okay, a very, very common pattern. Yeah, we looked at this a little bit in the uh, very first shoot, but um, it's really, really common to perform an operation on some variable, say A in this example, and store the result in the same variable. Uh, A equals A plus 4, for example, to mean um, add 4 to the value in uh, A. Or B equals B multiplied by Q would mean... Uh, you know, multiply the value in B by Q, whatever's in Q. And this is called a compound assignment, since uh, we're assigning, but we're also doing an operation, so it's compound. It's it's an assignment, but it's made up of other things. Um, yeah, yeah. Okay, so this is actually so common, these compound assignments, that there's a quick way of writing each of these in uh, C++ as well. So over here I've drawn up a little table. We've got the long way here on the left and the short way, or the you know proper compound assignment uh, operator, in the right column. And it's pretty easy, really. I'm sure you can see the pattern. But A equals A plus something, where the A uh, is a variable, and the something is you know either another variable or some maths expression, or it could just be a number, you know, it could just be 12 or 28, 42 million, it could be anything. Uh, anyway, that's not the point. Um, <laughs> a equals A plus something is the long way, A plus equals something is the short way. Uh, so you just put the operator, then an equals, and then, you know, the something that you're adding. Likewise, we've got one for uh, subtracting a value, instead of A equals A minus something, gosh, you know, how slow. Uh, instead of that, we can just do A minus equals something. Uh, likewise, we can do A multiplied equals something, A divided equals something, A modulus equals something. Uh, yeah, all of the operators have this uh, little compound assignment thing. Uh, there are actually a lot more operators that we haven't actually looked at yet, but we'll get into those, and they've also got these compound assignments. So we can do uh, A ampersand equals something, to mean a and equal something, or we can do a or equal something, or we can do a x or equal something. Yeah, we'll look at these three operators a bit later when we feel like we want some bitwise action. Uh, arcanity. Yeah, so I want to start putting um, a few little things into these tutorials that uh, if you're studying for an exam, maybe you're not interested in. I mean, I don't want to confuse anybody, but I. I don't know, I find some things interesting, and uh, yeah, I thought I'd put them in. So this is one of those things, I don't know how common this stuff is, but uh, you can actually um, put more than one of those compound assignments on a single line. Yeah. Uh, so int g equals 20, int q equals 9. Uh, but this is the interesting line, this is really rare, I've never actually seen uh, anybody use this, but you can, it's good to know that you can. Um, okay, so Q plus equals G minus equals 2. What's this going to do? Uh, it's pretty easy, really. All it's going to do is, first of all, uh, read it from right to left. So G minus equals 2. Uh, G is going to have 2 subtracted from it. Make it 18. And Q plus equals G. Um, well, 
G was 18 from the uh, previous little operation that we did. And Q is 19. 18 and 19 gives you uh, 27. So that's going to be our final answer. G is going to have uh, 18 and Q will be 27. Strange trick. Anyway, that's the end. Short little toot. I uh, hope that was interesting. Incrementing and decrementing. Compound operators. Yeah. Thanks for listening. Oh, head over to the site and get the slides too, if you want. See ya.